I have three collars going on right now and it's driving me insane. So let's talk about books. Welcome to the June to be read video. I'm gonna show you all the books that I got to read in June. The theme for the month was horror. There's some fantasy, there's some nonfiction. I'm missing one of the books because I got it and I binge read it and I wanted my mom to read it really, really badly. So I gave it to her to read. I had a birthday on May 29th and my partner got me this the best present I could have ever asked for this year. So he hit the, the nail on the head with that one. Let's get started. First up, we have The Last Ritual by S.A. Sidor. And I think this is so cool. It's so vintage and 1920s and occult. And I just, I had to get it. Aspiring painter Alden Oakes is invited to join a mysterious art commune in Arkham, the new colony when celebrated Spanish surrealist Juan Hugo Balthazar visits the colony, Alden and the other artists quickly fall under his charismatic spell. Balthazar throws a string of decent parties for Arkham's social elite, conjuring arcane illusions which blur the boundaries between nightmare and reality. Only slowly does Alden come to suspect that Balthazar's mock rituals are intended to break through those walls and free what lies beyond. Alden must act, but it must already be too late to save himself, let alone Arkham. And the next book that I got is called The Taker by Alma Katsu. True love can last an eternity, but immortality comes at a price. On the midnight shift at a hospital in rural Maine, Dr. Luke Findlay is expecting another quiet evening of frostbite and the occasional domestic dispute until a mysterious woman arrives in his ER, escorted by the police, Lenora McIlvery, a murder suspect. And Luke's life is changed forever. Her impassioned account begins at the turn of the 19th century, when an all-consuming love drove her to pay a steep price, an immortal bond that chains her to a terrible fate for all eternity. A lush historical rendering of transcendent love, paranormal beings, and the depths of pain that can be felt by immortal hearts. And next up we have Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. At the end of a dark prairie road, nearly forgotten in the Kansas countryside, is the Finch House. For years it has remained empty, overgrown, abandoned. Soon the door will be opened for the first time in decades, but something is waiting lurking in the shadows, anxious to meet its new guests. When best-selling horror author Sam McGarver is invited to spend Halloween night in one of the world's most infamous haunted houses, he reluctantly agrees. At least he won't be alone. Joining him are three other masters of the macabre, writers who have helped shape modern horror. But what begins as a simple publicity stunt will become a fight for survival. The entity they have awakened will follow them, torment them, threatening to make them a part of the bloody legacy of Kill Creek. The one that I'm missing is called This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. This Thing Between Us is very mature. It talks about death and depth, the horror of losing someone that is very near and dear to your heart, but it is also one of the only books I've ever read that can fully encompass what grief feels like to its very core. I loved how it ended. It is spooky, it is scary. Something that I really liked about it was that it had four parts, but it followed the three act structure in you know a very simple way. It was actually really simplified. Where you have the exposition, inciting incident, climax and resolution. Okay, so I think I kind of omitted something on accident. There are two books that I don't have with me right now. Uh, the other one is Emma, because I really wanted to read it. The Red Prince, John of Gaunt. And it's basically a biography of John, Duke of Lancaster. And then I also have this book, Mistress of Monarchy. I was on Ancestry, and for some reason I'm obsessed with finding my roots and going all the way back as I can into, I mean, if I could go to BC, I would, but I can't. The farthest back I've managed to get is 300 AD, and I'll show you. But anyways, anyways, that's also like a thousand years before these two. So 
I know that this isn't a history lesson, but you're here. John of Gaunt and Catherine Swinford are my ancestors. He did not get the throne, his, uh, his son did. Catherine was John's mistress and it was years and years before they got together and got married and all that jazz. But what really inspired me to get these is that they are my ancestors and they're from the 1300s. And I got these two nonfiction books because I want to know about their lives. Moving on, these are not, you see that cat here? These are not my books. These are my partner's brother's girlfriend's book. And she accidentally left them behind whenever they left to go back to their home. And I'm gonna send them back to her, but I really wanna try to give them a read. I don't even know which book to read first. From Blood and Ash and The Crown of Gilded Bones. I guess it's about royalty. Don't come for me in the comments. I genuinely don't know what they're about, but hopefully I can read them in maybe like a week or two and I will immediately send them back in good condition. Don't worry, Hannah. Also, thank you for giving me the opportunity to read them. Honestly, thank you very much. I promise I'll take good care of them. If these are the same timeline as these ones, I'm gonna be obsessed. So this next one was my birthday present from my partner. The deluxe edition of Berserk. I cannot show you the front pictures because I don't want to scare children or anyone that's watching this and has a sensitive heart. Anyways, this is after the eclipse and Guts has already lost his arm and his right eye and he has the crossbow arm. And I'll also link the playlist to watch the entire Berserk series, all 25 episodes of the anime. I'm not gonna open this up and show you a whole lot. I accidentally broke my heart and I skipped ahead and I read the last chapter online. Sadness. But they are coming back to continue it. So I have also seen a lot of review videos uh, talking about how awesome the deluxe version is. See, I love how big and honking this thing is. I think it's awesome. I went to my local game shop and um, I like to look in the back. if stuff is on shelves i like to look in the very back of stuff behind the stuff that's in the front like what are you hiding back there tell me your secrets i got this game it's a card game and it's called dark stories 2 50 twisted tales and <laughs> i have no idea how to play it <laughs> it's so confusing i've read the instructions i've looked through all of the cards and i just do not understand how you're supposed to play it. I don't understand what the cards are supposed to mean, but I guess that's something that I can try out. That is basically all I have for my June to be read. I have my hands full. Um, I might update on Instagram my uh, progress. I After I read every single book, I do put a review on Goodreads and a link to it on my website. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming to hang out with me for a while and I'll see you next time.